in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of god and lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it i will exalt my throne above this have to labor to carry a realm this is not about preaching this is about dominating your world and winning the battles of life if your atmosphere is wrong you will struggle you will do better than everybody but you will keep going down it will be like standing in a mud the more you labor the more you sink people don't know this even in ministry there are many ministers today if they preach if you hear them open the bible the verses you have read before they are reading it you say what is it john 3 16 that i heard from childhood that this person is talking about but the the heavens are short you will hear them you will weep, you will say oh god it's about realms what is the atmosphere on your head when you enter a spirit company something will happen to you the atmosphere will change and so you may do little and see great results it's your results that will even be encouraging you what do you do to cause that shift number one you must labor to see and to hear what bridges spiritual realms together is the voice of the spirit that controls those realms the bible said all things were created by the world and he said all things are sustained by the word of his power in hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 and john chapter 1 verse 2 all things are sustained by the word of his power he's talking about the realm and so when a spirit is speaking where he's speaking to and where he's standing are connected by his utterance because when a spirit wants to import his resources into another realm he uses utterances and so when a man wants to bridge realms together one thing he must always carry one thing that must not be scarce with him is the voice of the spirit that rules that realm and he must see the dimensions of that realm when you see and hear you just go to rest at least we who are pastors we know this many times god tells you to organize a program you check your account you don't have one tenth of that money like this one you will call everybody nobody will help you and when you know how this thing work instead of wasting your time calling people you go back and hide where the voice of god dwells if the voice of god comes to you immediately the realm is superimposed the resources of that realm comes the support structure of that realm come the influence of that realm come and people on their own as that realm shows up it begins to affect them and things begin to change that's how men get ahead in life men get ahead by bridging realms and the way to bridge realms is to see and to hear i can tell you why many people are struggling today they don't hear anything from the realm of god and they don't see anything from the realm of god the devil will be powerful in your life to the degree that you are blind and deaf in the spirit the moment you hear and see you will be shocked how things will happen with ease i told you some of my stories yesterday who will go and look for you in makodi for what nothing is happening there 90 percent of the people in benue are civil servants i know people that have been in ministry there for 30 years serving god faithfully when you come you know that they stand with you you say this is a man of god but in those 30 years they have been in a hall that sits 100 people and that's their biggest breakthrough but right there in benue i laid down praying and i saw an eagle and when i looked at the eagle i was hanging on the wings of that eagle and as the eagle stretched the wings it was moving from state to state from nation to nation the moment i saw it the moment i saw it doors began to open i was the hod of chemistry in a secondary school with master's degree because myself 
was a victim of the environment if you don't see and hear you'll be a victim i was a hey Todi, how much were they paying me with master's degree twenty-five thousand. and out of this twenty-five thousand, i will use twelve thousand to pay okada because if you don't pay ahead of time and you spend the money you will trek so you will pay the moment you collect salary you pay for next month they bring you to work they take you back i was sitting in my lab mixing chemicals and reagents when people began to call are you apostle rope i say yes they say please can you come to portacot i say why not what am i doing here <laughs> if you want me to come today i will come today as i'm calling somebody that oh boy i'm going to portacot another call will enter are you apostle Roku? i say yes he said can you come to a lorry what is your date i'm coming there now and doors began to open doors began to open i sat where i was sitting i'd been in ministry preaching for more than 13 years we opened a music a dance group we called it nkgc <laughs> we will come to church and preach with dancing we finished that one we did secondary school out we did all kinds of things when this thing opened in three months i had invitation from 17 nations did the message change no what changed i've seen something the moment i saw that ego my journey began because you can be sitting somebody will tell somebody somebody called me from russia he said his friend called him from germany and sent him my clip and say hear this person he was busy he didn't have time the friend called him in the night have you heard that person he said what is this person saying that i must hear he said hear him the next day he still called him on international call hear this person because something had moved something had moved it's not about ministry you can be selling slippers wait until you hear and see somebody will come somebody will tell somebody to tell somebody somebody will tell another person to tell another person and from selling slippers you can build mansions not because the slippers is special but you have heard something when the spirit talks to you you are implicated for progress when you see from the realm of a spirit the things that are in that realm begins to happen to you this is why wise men fight to hear and to see because they know the solution is not in running around see what failures do they are trying to seek favor with men they come here they explain themselves you know i didn't do it please i'm honest please they come here even when they are doing something they can't be themselves if they are standing here and three people are standing they are trying not to offend this one they are trying not to offend this one so they are a shadow of themselves but men who hear when they show up if you like the one million they are following what they saw they are following what they heard and as they are following it those who like them we are lying those who don't like them don't have a choice because they are propelled by an invincible force men go forward because of the things they have seen and they have heard because when you hear from heaven your experiences become the experiences of heaven are we together very quickly two ways to see and to hear number one to be able to see and hear you must be born of god because if you are not born of a spirit you don't have legitimate access to his realm so everyone that sees and hears from god is born of god jesus said in john 10 27 he said my sheep heareth my voice they don't pray for it they don't labor for it is their entitlement my sheep heareth my voice so if you are not properly born again there will be scarcity of the voice of god there will be scarcity of the visions of the spirit the moment a man becomes born again he get he gets the entitlement to hear and to see from the realm of god I spoke that in israel there was a season where priesthood began to suffer and the reason priesthood began to suffer is because he said in those days the voice of god was cast and he said there were no open visions first samuel chapter 3 from verse 1 to 2 in those days the voice of god was cast and there were no open vision immediately the land began to struggle 
when men begin to see and hear changes begin to happen as I'm talking now if I want to pray for the sick there's an energy level I need to enter to be able to pray for the sick I may take time to worship so that my utterances are energized now I'm teaching so I can talk casually but if I want to minister in the spirit or pray for the sick I need to go to a higher energy level when I come to that energy level this place will be boiling I can give commandments sicknesses we hear if I talk if I pray for the sick now I will have to exert my faith and I will not get as much result as I will get if I'm at a, on a higher energy level however while I'm talking like this if I turn and the Holy Ghost tells me that somebody is deaf here I don't need to put my faith to work all I need to do is to announce it there's somebody here you are deaf it's done and I'm not telling you something of 1980 I was in Gombe two days ago as I was I were, were praying I turned around I said there's a lady on my left who had fibroid it's gone as I was saying it she jumped up instantly fibroid vanished as I was here talking there's a woman by my right hand you are paralyzed on one side instantly paralysis left I was in Ubolo last week pa, somebody you are behind where the light is standing there so fibroid left you a woman ran out 22 years fibroid gone I saw somebody I said pile just left instantly 12 years pile gone I didn't need to exact my faith I heard if you see and hear you become an invincible entity so the things we press for in the spirit is so that we can see and hear because you are powerful to the degree that you see and hear if you don't see and hear you will do a lot of drama nothing will happen but when you start seeing and start hearing something will begin to happen and the first thing that activates seeing and hearing is to be properly born again the second thing that makes for seeing and hearing is the act of waiting of, on God why is it important to wait on God wait on waiting on God is not what activate the voice of God you can't compare God to speak he's a king but what waiting on God does for you is that he makes you become acquainted to God's voice God's voice is not loud God's voice is distinct so if you don't know the voice of God he will speak you will think it's your mind he will speak you will think it's somebody else he will not shout at you God may speak to you with the same voice of your human spirit but it's when you wait on God that you train your spirit man to be able to distinguish the voice of God from every other voices because he said when the trumpet makes an unusual sound who shall prepare for battle listen nowadays they are teaching people so many ways of hearing the voice of God all of those drama are not necessary the reason is because he said my sheep heareth my voice my sheep heareth my voice if you start waiting on God you will know that God has been speaking to you for the past 10 years you are not just hearing because you didn't spend time to isolate the voice of God from the many spectrum of voices that are in your spirit and so when somebody wants to hear the voice of God he needs to learn to separate himself and wait if you my wife called me with 10,000 phone numbers I don't need to think twice the moment she speaks what's going on I know I can't mistake it why because I've lived with her for some time and we spend a lot of time together those who stay with you even if they want to deceive you and they carry a strange number call you on your birthday a friend of mine called me one day <laughs> when God started helping us <laughs> sometimes our friends can be funny he took a strange line one unique number like that and called me say hello how are you doing when the, I, I saw that the voice was heavy so I said I'm fine sir and I said is that Apostle Michael Oroko I said yes sir this is Apostle Michael <laughs> you know sir this is Senator John I've been blessed by your ministry can you send me your account number I want to send you 100 million I 
say, I say, I say, before he even said that, he said, talk to me, what is your vision? I, I took time and analyzed my vision. And <laughs> I analyzed my vision, analyzed my vision. When I finished, he you now said, hmm, you're a young man, doing very well. Send me your account number. I want to send a little token of 100 million. My heart did like this. I heard myself. I say, yes, sir. I will, sir. Thank you very much. God bless you, sir. When I dropped the call, I, I knelt down. I prayed. And I thank God. I say, Lord, I didn't know this would happen so quick. Lord Jesus, you know, I told you before, I will give my tithe immediately. I will sow this amount. I will sow. I was... <laughs> After five minutes, Senator John called again. I quickly picked it and ran to where there was no noise I said yes senator yes senator sir. <laughs> the guy laughed <laughs> put 100 million if I get 100 million I go take this country <laughs> I said <laughs> I wish I held his neck I would have strangled him Sometimes your friends can change their voice. If you are not very close with them, you will not know. But there are other people, no matter what they do, the moment they make the voice, you will know. You say, You are the one. What is it? The reason the voice of God is cast is because men are not spending time with God. When they are going to shop in the morning, Oh Jesus, thank you so much. Oh God, you, you are a good God. I love you. You have blessed me. May your name be glorified. Amen. You can never know the voice of God. And you don't know the voice of God, you are a pre. Waiting for a predator to destroy you. But when you know the voice of God, when the predator comes, it becomes the basis for your testimony. The challenges that made others to sink becomes the challenge that will lift you up. Hope you know, Peter was not walking on the water. Peter was walking on the word of God. Because that word became another realm. If it be thou, bid me come. He said, come. The moment Peter stepped out, he was walking on another dimension. That's why when he doubted, he started sinking. So he was walking on his faith on that word. Praise God. So when a man wants to live from another realm, spend from the resources of another realm, he must pay the price to hear and to see. And the price to hear and to see is if you are born again, spend time with God. I'm not talking about you came to God and spoke in tongues. Baba, Baba, three hours. It's called, that is called speaking in tongues. When you are done speaking in tongues and your spirit becomes sensitive, that's when waiting starts. Waiting means to be still and see the salvation of God. Many times the reason we speak in tongues for long is because our heart is noisy. House rent is troubling you. Anger is troubling you. Somebody spoke against you. You heard this story. You heard that story. So you may need to pray for four hours, for five hours, for you to ascend to a level where you leave those things behind. Now that you have left those things behind and you have become still, that's when you now wait. Moses climbed Mount Sinai for 40 days. After climbing for 40 days, he came to the top of the mountain. That's what tonguing is. When you have ascended in tongues, then you wait. He was there for six days. Then God showed up. And God began to speak to him. Many don't wait on God. They are in a rush. How do you come to know your wife or your husband, your brother or your sister so much that sometimes even when they are not talking, you know what they are thinking. When they smile, you know if that smile is happiness. Or you know if that smile is that something is about to happen. There is a surprise. You can read their countenance because you have been with them for long. When you want to master the voice of God, you must spend time in waiting on God. And if you don't pay this price, the day crisis comes, don't blame God. Because many times, the difference between life and death is a whisper. A sister was about to catch a flight. She booked, she paid, they gave her boarding pass, checked her luggages in. When she was going up, she picked a signal. God didn't speak. 
she picked danger in her spirit she knew that she shouldn't be on that flight she went back and told them to give her her luggages they said they've checked the luggage in she made trouble they refused she left and waited for the next flight do you know that plane crashed and there were now this is not a testimony but we are just showing you how you become invincible in life there were many christians on board the difference between her and those christians is not that god loves her more than those ones god does not favor anybody above another he's not a respecter of persons what made the difference was the fact that she could pick god's voice she could pick the movement of the spirit the others couldn't the same business that somebody has pulled out from and saved this money somebody has put his whole saving and crashed both of them christians calling on the name of jesus but one hears and see the other doesn't so the investment was lost not because god is unfair not because god favored one and did not favor the other the investment was lost because one was not discerning many times the prayer we pray is not necessary many times the things we pursue is not necessary it's just because we can't hear god you are kneeling down praying every day lord open my doors lord favor me lord let this year be my year every year have been your year the problem is that you have not heard the signals of the spirit so even when your year came you didn't take the steps that god told you to take so your year came and passed but if you can hear god even the year that is not your year you will know how to manipulate your way in and have an inheritance it's not all of us that are living on earth make no mistakes about it the person you call your neighbor may be living in another realm that's why the things that happen to you don't happen to them and that's with, that's why the things that don't happen to you happen to them because the moment you connect to the voice of god connect to the visions of the spirit you cease living in your geographical location you start living from where that voice came and that voice makes you invincible the first way to make advantage and a headway in life is by living through the visions of god and the voice of god's spirit i can tell you that many times when we gather 70 to 90 percent of christians don't hear god neither do they see anything in the spirit that's why many are deceived because they don't hear god somebody comes and shakes himself as he shake himself he say come now they rush out in case there's nothing like in case about destiny he said the step of the just man is ordered by the lord if you don't hear god your steps cannot be ordered you may play religion for many years but you'll still be a victim and the outcomes of your life will reveal to you how vulnerable you are where things really matter somebody will live here today and consciously create time for god until the voice of god becomes a natural everyday part of his life are you not tired of being a victim i can come here and ascend in the spirit scatter this hall receive impartation but you can still go back and be a victim this is why god is giving us these instructions again and again so that we understand why the conference was put together as we pray for some of you what will happen to you is that your eyes will open some of you your ears will open it may not look like a spectacular thing you may not be among those who fell down but you will discover that as you leave the conference you want to do a business and you lose your peace and you tell your wife i don't know why i don't feel like doing this another economy has been activated some of you you want to step out of the house have you not seen somebody they left the house went straight to the road had an accident and died if only they had maybe there would have been two second delay and that orchestration would have been escaped i'm telling you life and death can be a moment life and death can be a whisper that's why those who hear and see they are indestructible and they are invincible but for you to see and hear you must spend time with god and don't come and ask me man of god how do i spend time with god 
when you wanted to date that lady how did you spend time with her for one month every night are you there do you have 10 minutes 10 minutes become two hours even when you don't have what to say hmm so you mean that's what you ate so okay now now that you have ate that what, how, how do you feel did you enjoy it hope there was not too much salt and you will talk about what she ate for one hour that means the goal is not the talking you are just looking for opportunity to hang around so if you know how to hang around men that's how you hang around God praise God the second way to download the realm of God is to obey him people who are rebellious the Bible said they will dwell in desolate lands he said the rebellious shall dwell in desolate land the verdict is already completed but a man who always lives in God's presence is a man who is quick to obey God Jesus said in John 10 27 my sheep heareth my voice they don't hear it for formality he said and they obey me it is their hearing and obedience that makes them the sheep of Jesus many people come and they say they want the mantle of Moses they want the mantle of Abraham they want the, the mantle of Enoch have you read about their lives Jesus came and he saw the, the children of Israel everybody I'm Abraham's seed I'm Abraham's seed he now told them in John 8 39 if you are Abraham's seed do the works of the works of Abraham Abraham was a man of obedience he was living with his parents God appeared to him and said leave your country leave your kindred leave your father's house come to the land that I will show you where is the land he didn't say it and the man stood up and started following not knowing where he was going that is what it takes to carry Abraham's mantle to be able to obey God even when it's at risk how many of us here can obey God when our life is put to the test for you to function in the kind of invincibility that Abraham functioned in, you have to be perpetually obedient did you read concerning this same Abraham the child he waited for for many years God came and said take thy son Isaac thy only child whom thou lovest does it not sound like God was taunting him he said take your only child in case you forgot as far as I'm concerned this is the only one and he said the one that you love in case you quickly go and carry Ishmael I'm not talking about Ishmael I'm talking about the Isaac you love he said come and sacrifice him to me and Abraham would not even as much as tell Sarah because he didn't want anybody to discourage him and Abraham will run and go and sacrifice Isaac to God and the Bible will come back later and said Abraham was old Genesis 24 verse 1 and well stricken in age he said the Lord had blessed him in all things so the mantle of Abraham is to be blessed in all things but for you to enter that level it takes a lot of obedience Abraham had God so much that he spoke to God as a man speaketh with his friend but what endeared Abraham to God was not religion there was no religion at that time at least as touching our work with God what endeared Abraham to God was his dogged obedience God knew that anything he tells Abraham Abraham would do in Genesis 18 19 he said I know Abraham my servant I don't know him as a king I know him as my servant anything I say he does and he said he will command his children in my ways he said now seeing that Abraham will become a great nation how shall I hide what I want to do from him so Abraham made his way into becoming a great nation through obedience you read about Elijah if I be a servant of God let fire come down and burn you and then you hear people shouting die by fire die by, how many have died you know what it means to die by fire how do you have that level of authority to call down fire from heaven die by fire die by fire 
and you are saying it, you are happy. Da, da, da. Now we even have songs that match it. <laughs> you will dance for a long I just told myself, I traveled all the way to Lagos. Spent my last cash. Labor to come here. I, I, is this man, did this man prepare to come for this conference? I don't know that. I mean, white guys don't try to create impression. He was just talking about his work with God casually. He doesn't need to come and say, and so when the Holy Ghost came, no, that's not his, his personality. If you are doing that because it's your personality, that's fine. That's your own personality type. But you will not go and see somebody and then no. He was just talking casually. When the man finished, he now said, Father, I make demand on your fire. The person that sat by my side almost broke my neck. The way the person hit me. Me too. You know, not everybody that fall fell because the Holy Ghost took him down. Some people, God, the people who are falling hit them. The person hit me. Ah, what's happening here? I saw people shouting everywhere. And it was not just about falling and shouting. As they were shouting, suddenly we heard. He said, oh, there's one witch here, there. What? One witch where? Where? How come? Somebody had stood up from witch here. What? Before I knew what was happening, people started lifting crutches. I knelt down quickly and started repenting. Lord, I'm sorry that I taught your servant. I'm sorry that I spoke against your servant. What is happening here? That was when I discovered fire is not charisma. Fire is not here, here. If you can do that, but there's no authority in the spirit. When this man come and give command, they are giving command from the weight of their obedience. They say, when your obedience is fulfilled, you will avenge all other disobedience. Go and check men of authority. They will tell you. You hear, even your money, God can't talk about it. If God say, come to church by five or by four, it's a lie. You must finish your business and close the shop before you come to shop. And then you now come back and say, the angels of God are guiding me. Which angels are those? <laughs> Religion has killed us. We use church language. Say church things. Everybody that moved the hand of God was a slave of God. Every one of them. You read about Moses. Moses came with a staff and subdued Egypt. And then you say you are the, somebody say he's the Moses of this generation. I said, well, go to one village and conquer it first. Let's see, let's see what you do from the village before we talk about a whole Egypt was the biggest civilization of the damn world. There was no nation like Egypt. They controlled the world at that time. And this guy showed up with a staff and shut down a whole system. How was he so powerful? The pharaoh he ran from, God came to him and said, go back to Egypt. Ha, that's where I ran for from my life. You are saying go back. Imagine now that you ran to Abba because you were in Kano and things were not working. And now that it looks as if you are stabilizing, you have married a wife, you have some children, you have some cattle. God didn't talk to you after a long time. When you are now stable, you are building your house. Your house is at roof level. God now show up and say, go to Kano. Why didn't you tell me before I married? <laughs> Did you not see when I went for marriage ceremony? Why didn't you tell me when I started the foundation of this building? Now that building has come to Linta level, you want me to go to Kano and start? Even the house I had in Kano, I sold it. You didn't stop me when I was selling it. I will now go back and start renting house. That was what happened to Moses. And when God spoke, the guy stood up, gathered his family and faced Egypt, not knowing what will happen to him. That's how obedient these men were. This is why they carried heaven everywhere. In the case of Moses, it was so graphic. In Exodus 13, 21, it said the Shekinah went with them as a pillar of fire by night and as a pillar of cloud by day. Nobody dared touch them. Every nation they passed through, they licked it up. You couldn't stand Israel. They became so invincible because of the obedience of one man that opened the heaven over them. Somebody here will walk in obedience and his obedience will become a shield not just for his family but for his fourth generation. Yeah. When God showed up in Israel, 
He didn't say he came to them because they were crying. He said he came because of his servant Abraham Isaac and Jacob their obedience became a shield for generations to come so when you walk in obedience your life is shielded and not just your life everybody connected to you are protected hope you know when Lot was working with Abraham he was prospering he now felt that I've mastered how to do this cattle business what is Abraham doing that I came to teach codes in this conference my time is remaining six minutes. Let me see if I can, if I can ascend. I know some young people came here. They are waiting for me to ascend. It's those immortal dimensions they are looking for. When the river begins to flow. So that they begin to. Better learn these things. Learn these things. Practice them. When that lady comes and walks and does like this, don't look at her. If you disobey God and follow her, you have sold your destiny. A demon you should command will come and sweep you off. When that boy comes and tells you, how can you say you love me? You don't want me to even kiss you. Run away. He's a man laden with lust. He's lost. He's trying to give expression to. Don't allow him to put his defied hands on you. Choose to obey God and stay there. The glory is too important. The Bible said when Moses came of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of Egypt that is for a season. They come and tell you that, look at you. How can you be this beautiful? And you are looking for money to buy ordinary week. Don't you know that on Friday there is a place we meet? Don't go there. You are selling your womb. You are selling the insurance policy that God has put in place for your children. You will go there, you will buy the withdrawal, but you will lose something you will never recover. And many years to come, you will find out that there is no glory in your life anymore. Even if you succeed in getting married, you will be like chaff before your husband. You will be trying to do everything. You won't know why you have no weight. The reason is because the dignity of womanhood you threw it away so yourself said you are not qualified to be a dignified woman when the devil comes with storms storms and tantrums refuse it will be hard especially when you are young you know what when those things come emotions will begin to move emotions your mind will be thinking of things you will be seeing pictures when those things are happening off your phone dump it go and look for somebody that has fire and tell him I want to be with you for today and when he's there he starts talking to you about God you start praying don't come back until you have prayed that emotion back to check pray that feeling down when you are able to surmount that feeling you will come back home you will discover that thing was not so hard but you left yourself in that energy level come out of it obedience is what makes men great in this kingdom when a man walks in obedience he becomes a kingdom agent God puts the rod of authority on his life and anywhere that man goes whatever he says is law they know this in darkness there are many people those of you who are a bit elderly here you know your grand fathers and your fathers every evening five o'clock they must go to the back of the house and do an oblation they will never miss it no matter how poor they are at least that snap must remain at least enough to pour two drops on the ground and to drop the cola not and say something to the spirits every day of their life they did it there was no time you saw them eat food that they will not cut the first one and throw down they knew how to keep 
those cycles and those routines. That's why those days when they tell you, you are cursed. You are cursed. Because their obedience put authority on them so much that anything they say, the jealousy of those spirits is activated. Now you are a Christian. Your allegiance is to God. You must become so dogged that only God moves you. And anything God tells you, come rain, come shine, you will stand your ground. This is what makes you invincible. Praise the Lord. They thought in that Opens the realm to you is prayer. Prayer is an act of engaging the spirit of God. And when you engage God, God shows up. And when God shows up, he comes with his realm. Now there's a way spirits walk. This is how men walk. If we leave this hall, we are going to leave this environment and assume the shape of the next environment. Spirits are not like that. When the spirit is moving, that spirit carries his environment with him. That's how spirits work. So when a demonic spirit enters here, he will come with his ambience. You will know that Kai, this place is not the same. Something has entered here. That's how spirit function. If you study Acts chapter 10, verse 38, he said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Holy Ghost is the spirit, power, wisdom, glory are his environment. They don't move without their environment so when a man begins to engage god in prayer something happens the environment of god shows up and many times a deposit of that environment is left behind so that man begins to walk and function by that environment in psalm 91 verse 1 it says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of his Almighty, of the Almighty. The shadow of the Almighty comes to encompass that place where that person is dwelling. It's that shadow of the Almighty that makes that place a secret place. The place is not a secret place because it's behind closed doors. The place is a secret place because God comes to envelop it. And so every time we begin to pray, one thing we are doing is that we are migrating we are relocating and we are changing environment he said in first corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 and 2 he said he that prayeth in an unknown tongues he said he does not pray unto men but he prays unto god he said in the natural he doesn't make sense how be it in the spirit so something has happened the man was praying in tongues but suddenly they now said he's it's not just praying they now said in the spirit so what has happened is that that prayer have moved that man from the natural realm where he's talking he has entered the spirit and now that he's in the spirit he said he's altering mysteries so prayer is a divine strategy of relocating you from the natural realm to the spiritual realm this is why men who pray they carry an atmosphere a man who prays doesn't need to come tell you he prays he prays for five hours when he shows up that atmosphere will speak for itself somebody told a story many years ago they were traveling in a train and when they got into a city the train stopped for their routine checkup and then people were permitted to go down and do a little shopping here and there and while people stepped down from the train the power of god began to move on the street people were falling down and then people got surprised What is happening here and one of the old persons in the train said he said i can't tell 
He said, but what I'm seeing here, I know that these things happen when D.L. Moody is around. Because when D.L. Moody is in an environment, he doesn't need to talk. If D.L. Moody enters this auditorium, he may choose to sit at the back there. But the moment he enters, people will start falling down. Because of the atmosphere that he carried. So he said, no, I know that when D.L. Moody is around, these kinds of things happen. And to their greater shock, when the train started moving, lo and behold, D.L. Moody was sitting down. So what happened is that the man touched the soil. And the moment he touched the soil, his witness came into that soil. I wrote, I read, I heard uh, Renard Bonke told the story. He said he was in South Africa. He went into a shop to buy something. And the moment he confronted the person selling, give me what I want to buy, the person started crying. Meanwhile, this person was not a Christian. This was a new age practitioner. But when he looked at Renard Bonke, there was an energy that we had bunk carried. That energy arrested his soul. And he started weeping and repenting for his sin. And we had bunk said something. He said, I asked God what happened to him. That was what blew my mind. I was already stuck, struck, struck. That somebody saw you and started crying. He now said something that blew my mind somebody is crying in front of you won't you ask the person what is wrong he said he asked god that means it was shorter for the bonke to receive response from god than from the person in front of him he had breached the distance between him and god so short that if you are here and the bonke is looking for his phone it will be faster for the bonke to ask the holy ghost than to ask you because before you answer the holy ghost would have answered him ten times he had built that level of atmosphere and he entered the shop this is not church this is market hope oh, this is a business hall you know how busy market can be in the market nobody can afford you five minutes of conversation what do you want as he's talking to you he's talking to another person because attention span is very short many people are competing for your attention in that level of chaos a man came with heaven and the moment the person selling saw him instantly the person's attention was arrested. Why do you think when the Hadbonke is coming, 10 million people gather? Do you think it's evangelism? Do you think it's publicity? It's not publicity. When that man is coming, the angels that move with him are many. So those angels invite the whole city. Many times when the Hadbonke is coming, the Muslims come to the crusade ground before you come. I heard that in 1996, when the Hadbonke finished a crusade, a bacha came to the hotel at night and knocked. What was he looking for? He wanted to give him a seed. Meanwhile, there are many pastors who come to church and try to lay money from people. This guy enters a city, a country for a crusade. He didn't ask for offering. The president of that nation, who is not a believer, came to the hotel at night under pressure, not for anything, but just to give him a seed and say, thank you for coming to Nigeria to help my people. How can a Muslim talk to a pastor like that? because there is something the man carries when he shows up you don't see a christian you see god because what that prayer makes him is not a religious person the prayer doesn't make him look like a christian the prayer makes him look like god and anybody who sees god will bow many of us are doing games and gimmicks and this is why nothing works nothing will ever work until your prayer is strong enough to generate an atmosphere there is a prayer you will pray the moment you enter your family the demons we know when jesus came down from the mountain after 40 days and 40 nights of prayer and fasting the bible said the moment he entered the synagogue he said the demons began to cry out why have you come before your time the question is was that the first time he entered the synagogue he has been entering that synagogue from the age of 12. but this time around he entered the synagogue from 40 days and 40 nights of prayer and fasting and before he introduced himself the demons began to introduce him the bible said jesus went to the land of gadara and the moment he came there this was a madman that was put in chains in fetters fetters are not chains fetters are irons 
because when people become too violent they can break chains so they put fetters the bible said even the fetters the man breaks it and because nobody can stop him he dwells in the tomb the moment jesus showed up the atmosphere that he carried the man ran from where he was and knelt before him and said son of david have mercy on me why have you come before your time and the demons began to beg him please don't cast us away cast us into those pigs meanwhile you are in your house you say you are a prophet you are an apostle and demons have been there for 10 years the problem is that there's no atmosphere there's no energy there's no radar when you build radar when you show up they will know that somebody who is not normal have come and this is not a prerogative of prophets it's not a prerogative of apostles it's for everybody that calls upon the name of the lord if you start praying now you will be shocked what will happen to your life in three months the shift that you will experience we so bamboozle you you'll be scared i heard about wf kumui he went somewhere and prayed until when he came out his eyes were red like blood and when he showed up here was a madman in chains that they they were holding waiting for him other pastors holding the madman waiting for him and when he showed up he said leave him when he said leave him the pastors talk, he thought he was talking to them and so the pastors left him when the pastors left him the demons had already left him so when he said leave him he wasn't talking to men he was talking to spirits and the spirits obeyed him before the pastors leave him immediately all the demons took off before the pastors left him the demons have left him and the man became sane on the spot not because the guy said in the name of jesus come out he didn't say you demon wherever you are coming from it's not grammar it's energy when he showed up leave him the demons were wise enough to know that this man is a heavy duty machine if we are not careful we will have problem and they fled to wherever they came from because a man of authority had shown up when you cook yourself in prayer nature responds to you spirits respond to you because the art of prayer is the art of traveling in the spirit he said in the spirit you are uttering mystery you are not ordinary you are not weak you are not defeated the problem is that you have not started praying if you will give yourself to prayer the bible said concerning the apostles he said we will give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world and a point came they gave themselves so much to pray there's no secret about this thing the secret is already exposed he said give yourself to prayer and to the world when they gave themselves to it a point came when peter is coming out of prayer you don't need to say pray for me the moment his shadow touched them there was enough energy inside the shadow to heal the sick the bible said they took handkerchiefs from the body of paul paul had prayed and concocted so much spirit that you took handkerchief from paul go and put that hanky on a madman the demons will know that this handkerchief came from a man called paul meanwhile we are a generation where we will gather ourselves around somebody and say let's pray in tongues we are doing religious prayer for two hours the same demons that know handkerchief they don't know our voice the same demon that know handkerchief even when we lay hands they are not aware and we are satisfied with dressing well and coming to church something is definitely wrong a generation must rise that we cook themselves well enough that when they enter their city the energy they bring into the city will affect the territory when they enter a business the energy they bring there will affect that business else our generation can be wiped off and God will forget that we existed because nobody can say restore nobody can say restore I heard about Amy Semper McFassie when she is done praying she just goes and stand on the street like a statue and people will gather around crowds of people in their thousands will gather around because she's just standing and when these people gather around she will run from there and run into a hall and as she is running there 10,000 people are running after her does that make sense what kind of madness is that you come to a city you stand on the street for like 30 minutes and in 30 minutes 5,000 6,000 10,000 people gather and when they gather they don't know why they are there and you start running into an auditorium and when you enter there all of them will enter and they will sit down she'll start preaching 
Meanwhile, you, you have 1,000 complimentary card. Nobody is coming for the business. Because there is nothing pulling people. There is a word called anakazo in scripture. It's a compelling force. When you pray, your atmosphere generates anakazo. The man who should help you, he may be in London. When that energy is ripe, he will stand up, book a flight, come to Nigeria, come to Abba. He won't know why he came. When he's done helping you, he will go back to London. He will think he came for holiday. He didn't come for holiday. He came because you pulled him from where he is. When men come to God, crying that they are weak, God looks at them because God knows they have not taken advantage of the things he made available. Prayer is one of the resources God made available for our advantage. A man who prays cannot be defeated. A man who prays live in heaven on earth. A man who prays is a champion forever. And somebody will leave this conference. There is one thing God will do for you amongst other things. The hunger, the hunger for prayer. The energy for prayer. The body for prayer. It will hit you so hard that prayer will become your second name. As you are walking, the same way you breathe oxygen non-stop. That's how you will pray non-stop. If I tell you stories here, it will blow your mind. How men took over their awards. The apostles were being hunted with bows and arrows. All they had was prayer. And the Bible said, the first day, 3,000 added. He said, the second day, 5,000 added. He said, they said, the third time, there were a multitude. He said, the third time, the whole city came to them. There was no political connection. There was no military connection. All they had was prayer. Prayer was enough. When they arrest them, they don't have anybody to run to. Today, when they arrest you, they can call somebody to call the governor, to call the Senate president. The apostles didn't have that. All they had was prayer. The Bible said, Peter was arrested and put in prison. And because they didn't have anybody to call, he said they went to their closet and they were praying. Why they were there praying? The Bible said, the angel of the Lord came down from heaven that night and he entered the room of Peter. Peter was sleeping. He tapped him and said, get up quickly. Wear your sandals and walk with me. The chain fell on its own accord. As they walked towards the door, it opened on its own accord. They walked towards the gate, it opened on its own accord. And he led Peter out of the city. Because somebody was somewhere praying. When Paul was arrested, beaten and put in prison, the Bible said Paul and Barnabas, Acts 16.25, he said they prayed and they sang. And they said the angel of the Lord came down. The whole prison was shaking and their chains fell off their hands when men pray they become as invincible as the angels of heaven the reason it looks as if we are defeated is because we are not praying we are running to men we are calling for physical help and mobilization when will you start mobilizing heaven because when you pray you are mobilizing the resources of heaven that your business that looks as if it's dormant put some prayer on it and see what will happen that your project that looks as if it's dormant Put some prayer on it and see what will happen. The way we conquer the natural realm is by praying. I heard about the Moravian brothers. They had nothing. All they had was prayer. And sometimes when they want to enter a city and they are denied access, they sell themselves as slaves. The moment they enter that city, they enter that city with turbulent and violent prayer not too long they will take over that city it doesn't matter how they enter they may enter as celebrated evangelists they may enter as slaves but if they have prayer it's enough they will take over that city and not too long that city will become a city of prayer your family cannot be in darkness when you are here it means you have not begun to pray your business cannot be in darkness your ministry cannot be in darkness your organization cannot be in darkness when God comes he will not hold the devil responsible you are the one he will hold responsible because he said go into all the walls and disciple all nations how come you can do everything but prayer it's because the devil knows that the day you start praying that day you become an envoy of heaven on the face of the earth you can do every other thing apart from prayer you are wrong the day prayer comes that's the day God showed up because that prayer can change anything and everything believers love dancing believers love music festival 
but when you say come for prayer rally they become scanty because the moment they start praying prayer attacks their humanity and activates their divinity prayer shifts them from earth and downloads heaven and that assignment is so difficult for them meanwhile that is where their true victory lies somebody comes to tell you that in the last five years nothing has been working so what have you been doing in the last five years if you pray fervently for one month you can change the situation that have lasted for 100 years the bible said elijah is a man subject to like passion just as we are he said he prayed earnestly that there should be no rain and there was no rain for a space of three and a half years james 3 17. how can a man pray one man pray and shut the heaven over a city and you claim that you have been in your crisis for eight years you have been in your crisis for 10 years that means your crisis is not a problem your prayerlessness is the problem your crisis is actually an alarm that reminds you that you are not praying because the moment you start praying every force that needs to be mobilized for your deliverance to be engendered they'll be mobilized and somebody who is going about telling people about his problem it's time for you to go back and dust your altar because what you are telling people is not your problem you thought that was your problem your problem is actually prayerlessness what you are telling people is your problem is actually an alarm that you are not praying that thing you call your problem is is an intervention to wake you up from slumber because that thing will not go until you start praying and the day you start praying that thing will not only be what we go a point will come the other things that should be activated that have not yet been activated will be activated jesus prayed the apostles prayed you must pray for you to succeed somebody wants to ask the lord tonight give me the grace for prayer i know you sing i know you preach i know you do a lot of business but do you pray how many times do they hear your voice in heaven when things go wrong in the territory can god knock on the door of your heart and say stand up i want you to do something about it what is your strength in the spirit what is your strength you want to ask god for the grace to pray this morning this is why we i came i came to remind you that it's not sensation i came to remind you that it's not religion i came to remind you that this is a business of spirits that you were granted admission to participate in men who don't pray don't know how vulnerable they are there's a friend of mine a footballer very skillful god opened door for him he was to be taken to europe i'm talking about 2008 the door for his breakthrough opened to go play, play professional football in europe the night he was to travel he dreamt and somebody came held his left hand pulled it and the bow removed the next day the pain was so much he couldn't even stand until they had to cancel the deal the scouts returned it took two years for that hand to be healed and up till now the hand is like this from that day he never played football again something that should have been a breakthrough but there was no prayer support in the dream those of you who follow me the woman that was healed of paralysis in Gombe she was sleeping something was chasing her and she fell down and the side she fell down when she woke up she saw herself on the floor and the right side of her body was paralyzed that's how many die the day when God wants to bless them there are most of us here God wants to bless us but he's careful because that blessing will bring an announcement to our life and there's no prayer support and so the devil is not concerned about us if God leaves us now we'll become visible in the spirit and when the devil strike there will be no prayer there will be no defense system in the spirit so even though God is urgent upon blessing you the first thing he wants to do is to get you praying first so that your lifting will not become your grave because many people today they are lifting is their death the day God gave them money that was the day the, the protocol of accident was activated because the moment the money came they bought a car the moment they bought the car they started over speeding and they died if they were not blessed they would have been alive till today so many times when God wants to bless people 
he wants to create an insurance policy first of all to keep them in that blessing and one of those policies is prayer but the holy ghost have been tapping you three months four months six months one year stand up and pray but you can't every day you sleep like a dead man and the lord is saying when will you rise in isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 he say arise he say shine he say your light is come he said for the glory of the lord is lifted upon you but your that glory will not shine on you until you arise first because he said there will be darkness and he said gross darkness shall be upon the people but the people that we walk in the glory are those who we arise because your shining is tied to your rising and when you rise he said gentiles shall come to your rising and he said kings shall come to the brightness of your rising there are some of you that need to beam in the place of prayer until what god put in you is refined and you shine forth like gold because the kings of the land will never come until you rise when god calls you to pray he wants you to start living on earth from heaven anything you are doing without that invisible advantage we fail i came to invite you to prayer i came to summon you to the altar those ashes on your altar you must dust them off and for the first time you will enter a covenant of prayer with God and you will tell God until I see your face and until I come to where you are standing and become your ambassador I will not stop praying the monies can come the favors can come the influence can come but I will pray until I become one with you because I know now that what I am and what I can become is a function of prayer I want to invite somebody this morning you may be here you know i began by telling you to hear the voice of god you must be properly born again and then i'm i'm rounding up now by telling you that to be invincible you must be thoroughly given to prayer and so the call is simple you are here you are not sure of your salvation the time has come darkness is coming why the holy ghost is troubling you every night to pray if you know why you will be shocked i've told my story many times for six months god was troubling me every day pray i will wake up sometimes i will carry my phone check facebook after 20 minutes i'll sleep sometimes i will wake up and go and drink water when i drink water i will come back i, I want to pray i will put the pillow and lie down and put my hand on my chest and i will sleep six months later when I refused that prayer, my elder brother woke up and said he's feeling a pain around his forehead. After two days, suddenly he wants to drink water. Water will fall down. And when they went to the hospital, they said he's left something. How did they call it? Say seven or something cranial something had been paralyzed. So he had facial paralysis. How can pain on the left side of your head become paralysis? Before we know what was happening, the guy became weak. He couldn't walk. They carried him to the hospital. On Tuesday, on Wednesday, he is in coma. Huh? What is this? How can pain on the left side of your head become coma? What is the connection? They said they need to do CT scan. Before we know what was happening, they went to operate the CT scan machine. He got 40. They said the only place they can find another CT scan machine is in Lafia. But he's already in coma. They cannot take the risk of driving him to Lafia because he can die on the road. We were there, they said they will repair CT scan. The expert that should come and repair the CT scan was delayed for two weeks. Meanwhile, God saw all of this protocol and in order to salvage it, he came six months earlier. Rise up and pray. A war is coming. You need energy. I saw the guy two days before he died I started seeing the vision I saw him in the coffin but there was no energy because the attack that came required a lot of strength in the spirit to stand and God had weighed me he saw that I was light I couldn't contend with the demons I couldn't contend with the principalities that came and this guy is a born leader six months earlier arise and pray arise and wake up and sleep when the battle came i saw the war but there was no strength many people will die because you refuse to pray 
many destinies will be cut off because you refuse to pray and God have seen that something is coming in 2023 and so he came earlier and he's telling you wake up the day will come when those battles come you will look for sleep sleep will be gone and then you will discover that the sleep you are sleeping now was an error of the operation of spirit festivals to bridge realms together which is where your true advantage in your walk in life rests the first one I just spoke about it gives you an advantage with God because when you become like God you will do what God wants and you will have relevance with God but while you are building your capacity with God you also need to dominate your world because a man can be so much like Jesus yet he will be dying of poverty a man can love God so much yet he is defeated in life he can't even pay his house rent the reason is because he is strong in the realm of God because he has transited but he's not strong in the realm of men because he has not brought that realm here so for us to be impactful and relevant something must be done now there are many pastors in Abba here today some of them have prayed in tongues for 40 years but they don't even have where to bring 20 people and teach them the word of God because they are strong in that realm but that realm is not, is not strong through them in their realm most of the people that make impact they make impact because they are able to bring the realm of God to this place if you can't bring the realm of God to your family you will be a true believer but things will go wrong in your family if you can't bring the realm of God to your business you will be a true believer but things will go wrong and you'll be wondering why are things going wrong even though I'm serving God the thing is because you are not strong in the, you are strong in the realm of God but the realm of God is not strong in your realm I was serving God passionate about God I go for every vigil I go for every conference I, we were called Puritans Puritans so that we didn't just walk with God in holiness our holiness was corrosive that when you come around us it will rub off on you if you are doing anything wrong we will tell you to the face and we don't care if that relationship ends that day we were that corrosive and with this fire for God with this transformed life every three years in my house somebody will die what is going on another person will come and die and meanwhile if you are not a student of patterns then you are not a priest because one of the things that make for priesthood intelligence is the ability to discern patterns and cycles and to intercept them and bring the government of God meanwhile this guy was burning in holiness but people were dying so many demonic things were happening until my elder brother died and I knew that no beyond living a holy life there are other things that we must enforce in order for us to succeed in this realm as that one was happening I had three elder sisters none of them was married they will enter a relationship before you know they've broken their heart meanwhile these are pretty beautiful elegant women they will dress up they had a good sense of fashion they were educated but nobody will come and ask for their hand in marriage as if that was not enough there was a yoke of poverty before the month starts you have already borrowed money against next month so when people are getting their savings this month you are paying debt so sometimes we end the year with debt so while we are entering the next year we are traveling into next year with debt so even if money comes in the money is already minus because the debt that is on ground is superior to the money that came in so you can receive 100,000 it's not a blessing the reason is because when 100,000 comes maybe there was 250,000 so you receive a blessing you are still in minus because of the level of poverty you want to pay school fees they have to call somebody to help meanwhile why this person they are calling to help there is a debt on ground that was not yet paid but because you can't go back to that same person you have to look for another person so you 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 hunt for them you hunt people and get 
there were many yokes and now discovered that we have to bring heaven to earth if we don't bring heaven to earth we will be dominated because other realms have been superimposed you are holy but you are dying you are holy but you are frustrated you are holy but you are in pain there was a need for a spiritual intervention and this thing i'm saying here is not alien there are many of you here you are virgins but you are about to drop out from school and there's no help coming from anywhere if you must receive help you must allow another download to come into your realm either by giving up your virginity or you will have to go somewhere and somebody will use you but if you know how to bring the realm of god here in that realm of god there is something called wisdom in that realm of god there's something called favor in that realm of god there's something called speed you can be where you are god can manipulate the step of someone and the person will lose his peace until he finds you and he will favor you for no reason then you will understand it's not every man that sleeps with a girl before he gives him money because when favor is at work somebody cannot just may not just give you money he can buy you a car and build you a house and no strings are attached but for that kind of supernatural things to happen there must be an atmosphere around you because it's not a joke is that atmosphere that compares that level of favor you know israel were slaves in egypt for 400 years they were tormenting them night and day until the bible said god gave favor to the israelites the moment that favor came he told them go and ask the egyptians to give you their jewelries how can you go and ask your master who have been the master of your great grandfather who flogs you every day give me your gold are you all right give me your diamond what do you mean by that are you crazy you have become bold they will double your punishment but when favor comes as you come to them even before you ask they are under pressure to help you and they don't know why is the realm you came with do you not know that our politicians today most of them before they come out to speak you who is saying this year we will not be foolish again we will not be blind they are laughing at you this year we will vote the competent person compete what when the time comes they know where to go to they know the sacrifice to do and before they come to talk they will choose something and when they come they come with the realm they may not have anything I, when i went back to check the manifesto of the current of our current leader i said what did this man say that convinced nigerians I was I, I i i said okay maybe i'm being unreasonable i now listen to like four of his speech speeches that he gave he can't even read it and i say what did he tell us what did he tell nigerians meanwhile four, four years ago people were fighting their blood brothers people were fighting their parents and say i remember the first during the first time when they came up you needed to see what was happening churches that their pastors made mistake and say don't vote this person people will stand up in the middle of service and, and go out people were what what did he tell us go back and hear the speech he gave on the day of inauguration you will ask yourself why was i clapping when they were counting that election when they were counting that result there were many christians who were following they were not even waiting for resort they were collating in the apollo when the man gave good luck gap oh they started celebrating from different quarters <laughs> eight years later you now discovered it's not english language he came with a realm and even now some of the politicians that deceived us four years ago people are now saying we will never vote them they will, they don't care because they know your will can be manipulated they know your choice can be manipulated all they need to do is to kill seven virgins they give them something they chew when they come they come with an atmosphere on the day of election you will see godly people still stand up go and line up in the sun for eight hours and vote them into power again the moment they inaugurate them they come back home and start complaining they know this in darkness but believers don't know that's why you want to go for a job interview you are hoping that things will work you want to go and start a business you are hoping that the territory will be favorably disposed disposed and you are not deliberate about carrying them if you don't carry something 
your family will fail. Give it time. If you don't carry something, your business will fail. Give it time. If you don't carry something, even your ministry will fail. Give it time. And so this morning, I came to show you four things that you must do in order to carry an atmosphere that is superior to your, your, your territory. I came to show you four things that you must do to carry a realm into everything you do. There is a realm you carry, whether men like you or not, they will favor you. You don't favor people because you like them. He said the king went home and lost his peace. And said, is there anybody that have done something good for the king that has not yet been remembered? And he said they brought the chronicles of, of the kings. And when they checked, he said there was a man there. Listen, you don't, people are not helped because they love them. People are not favored because they love them. People are not even favored because they did something extraordinary. People are favored because they carry an atmosphere. If you don't carry that atmosphere, you will walk as if you want to kill yourself. Somebody met me three weeks ago and said, he was talking to me about a very senior politician he has served. He said, even the driver, the man has given him a house. Even the driver. He said, sometimes, and everybody he gives gifts to, is the one that arranges the paper. He said, sometimes he just meets a girl, have a fling with the girl, and say, give him this house in Maitama. And he has been sharing houses from when this person was Senate President. Served for several terms, came down, Senator for years, and he has been distributing houses. And there is not a day that the man said, that 100,000 remaining with you, keep it. Meanwhile, this guy is writing houses for people, carrying monies in Ghana must go to go and give people, including small, small girls. When I looked at him, I said, I, I wish you understand. Meanwhile, he is laboring every day, hoping that if the man sees his hard work, the man will, something will happen. When he's laboring, the man doesn't see it. It's only his mistakes that the man notices. Because the atmosphere is wrong. 